Hi, everybody. It's Maureen Muldoon, and we are on lesson 186 with the Course in Miracles, the workbook lessons. And if you like these lessons, go ahead and like it and subscribe and share it with your friends. I am here today with my dear friend, Mary Kazmarek. She's one of the teachers on Miracles Live 365, and she's going to help me with the lesson today. So in the next chunk of lessons, you're going to get to meet some of the amazing teachers that have come from Miracles Live 365, just so if you might be interested in that program. Program, you'll get to see um, their styles and their personalities and um, how awesome they are. So uh, you want to kick it off, Mary? I sure do. <laughs> Lesson 186 on page 351 in the workbook for A Course in Miracles. Salvation of the world depends on me. Here is the statement that will one day take all arrogance away from every mind. Here is the thought of true humility, which holds no function as your own, but that which has been given you. It offers your acceptance of a part assigned to you without insisting on another role. It does not judge your proper role. It but acknowledges the will of God is done on earth as well as heaven. It unites all wills on earth in heaven's place to save the world, restoring it to heaven's peace. So what jumped out at me for that paragraph was true humility. And, you know, that we were just talking about this, that we're here to play the role uh, that God intends for us and that we are all teachers of God. Um, and that sometimes that feels like uh, we need to be humble to do that. I, I was listening to this guy speak the other day, I forget who it was, but he was saying like that water is like love and it humbles itself because it doesn't rise itself up above everyone. It lowers itself so that it can get into the nooks and crannies of humanity. And I think that that's a beautiful thing about these, these lessons and our role in bringing forth salvation. Um, did you want to share anything on that paragraph? Well, I just want to say what jumps out for me is the first sentence. Here is the statement that will one day take all arrogance away from every mind. And that statement is the salvation of the world depends on me. Um, I personally don't like to be around what I call arrogant people. Mm -hmm. I don't like when I am arrogant. And I would like to rid myself of arrogance that I have in my life. So um, that jumps out at me and it makes me want to lean in and listen closely. Yeah. So let us not fight our function. We did not establish it. It's not our idea. The means are given to us by which it would be perfectly accomplished all that we are asked to do is to accept our part in genuine humility. There's that word again, humility, and not to deny with self-deceiving arrogance that we are worthy. What is given us to do, we have the strength to do. Our minds are suited perfectly to take the part assigned to us by one who knows us well. I don't know. It reminds me of when I was leaving acting and I went into, um, I was invited into motivational speaking and I was like this is not for me this is idolatry like I don't want to do this and it wasn't until like I really got like stop steering the ship like just be humble to God's plan you don't know what anything is for you judge nothing you don't judge the good you don't judge the bad you just come open-minded open-hearted and open-handed to everything and say okay um let me be with this let me try this on let me do what God would have me do so that's a big step for a lot of us, I think. Love that. Paragraph three. Today's idea may seem quite sobering until you see its meaning. All it says is that your father still remembers you and offers you the perfect trust he holds in you who are his son. It does not ask that you be different in any way from what you are. What could humility request but this? And what could arrogance deny but this? Today, we will not shrink from our assignment on this, on the specious grounds that modesty is outraged. 
It is pride that would deny the call for God himself. Wow. Now I looked up that word specious because I wasn't totally sure. Mm -hmm. And it says misleading. So I'll read it with that just mm -hmm. to help us understand it more. Today, we will not shrink from our assignment on the misleading grounds that modesty is outraged. Mm -hmm. It is pride that would deny the call for God himself. So we think that something like the salvation of the world depends on me. Me? Who, who <laughs> am I? I'm just chopped liver. You know, what, what could I possibly bring? Mm -hmm. But when we step into who we really are, as the Course tells us, we're no longer misled by false modesty. No, we step out and say, I am a child of God. I, I, I shine just like God himself because God is within me. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I am ready to take on the call for God mm -hmm. because I've learned that that's the best place for me to be. Because when I'm in charge of my own life, mm -hmm. things get a little wonky. Yes, I love that you brought up like who am I chop liver because that's just one of the bouncers that stand at the stands at the door of our greater good. And I love that most miracle workers like kind of know that Marianne Williamson poem by heart like oh, our darkness but our light that most frightens us. Uh, who are we to be brilliant? Who are we to be audacious? But when you're doing this for the praise of God for the good of God, um, who are you not to be? Like God does not need any more six sorry calling cards, you know, like God needs us to be brilliant. And we gotta we gotta turn this whole ship around, you know, and make it make it look fun. I remember I had I had nuns growing up and I remember writing a poem that I was, you know, in the poem I wrote, like she was married to God and she made it look terrible. <laughs> you know? Uh, and it's like we gotta be married to God and make it look fucking awesome. Um, because it is, right? It's way better than when I was in charge. And, you know, one of my things that I've um, learned from one of the other teachers on the course, Beth, who says, um, everything I do, I do with God. Mm -hmm. And when I use that mantra throughout the day, mm -hmm. uh, um, when I'm hooked up or when I'm getting irritated by something, mm -hmm. I say, even in this irritation, I'm doing this with God. With God, I can do anything that would have had me um, just caught up in a tizzy for days yeah. if I had to do it all by myself. Right. So it goes on to say four. Um, okay. In your paragraph, the word humility was there too. And in my paragraph four, it's there again. All false humility we lay aside today that we may listen to God's voice reveal to us what he would have us do. We do not doubt our adequacy for the function he will offer us. We will be certain only that he knows our strengths, our wisdom, our holiness. And if he deems us worthy, so we are. <laughs> it is but arrogance that judges otherwise. So, I mean, just more of the same. And I'll pass. There is one way and only one to be released from the imprisonment your, pr your plan to prove the false is true has brought to you. Accept the plan you did not make instead. Judge not your value to it. If God's voice assures you that salvation needs your part and that the whole depends on you, be sure that it is so. The arrogant must cling to words, afraid to go beyond them, to experience which might affront their stance. Yet are the humble free to hear the voice, capital V, voice, which tells them what they are and what to do. Pass. Arrogance makes an image of yourself that is not real. It is this image which quells and retreats in terror as the voice of God assures you that you have the strength, the wisdom, and the holiness to go beyond these images. You are not weak, as is the image of yourself. You are not ignorant and helpless. Sin cannot tarnish the truth in you, and misery can come not near the holy home of God. I love this. I love that paragraph, right? It reminds me of a section in the gospel of truth that says like, this is the holy day within you dwells a light that cannot fail. And 
you know, another thought that comes up to me is there was a story about this guy, um, Cliff Young, who was in this like major professional race. The, it was like a three day race and he was against professionals and they had latex and they had sponsors and they were like, old man, you can't be in this race with us because you have like cowboy boots on and overalls and he was like, well, I'm, I just want to be in it anyhow. And he just stayed with him. He was a shepherd and he would run all day and night. He was like, I thought I could do it because I spent all these days chasing she sheep. And so um, he won the race. And at the end, um, he didn't know it was even for money. And he gave everybody, like he split the money with everyone. Like it was just an astonishing demonstration of somebody who just said, I don't care if you don't think I'm right for the role. I think I can do it. And I think it would be fun. And I want to, I want to do it. And in doing it, he kind of, he broke so many barriers and so many assumptions we had about athletes in the same way that I think it'd be helpful to break barriers and assumptions about teachers. Do you know, like we say like, you got to be a teacher, you got to do this, you got to do that. And it's like, no, no, a teacher of God is anybody who sees his brother's good as his own and remembers God. That's it, you know? And so I, I and that's all we're ever doing. The only job we're ever playing for God is to teach love over fear. That's it. And so we're all preordained for that. We don't need to buy special latex outfits <laughs> or get sponsored. Although we could. Although we could. We could wrap them. <laughs> um, so anyway, all of that came up in that paragraph for me. Love that. It's great. You know, um, I did a ton of therapy over the years before I met the course. 12 step, psychotherapy, EMDR, um, inner child work. I was always trying to find that inner peace and to, to feel good about myself, basically, mm -hmm. to feel worthy of life. Yeah. And it's paragraphs like this that we just read that by the end of my first year, I was like, I remember when I first, my first year of taking the course, I was like, I'm starting to really like myself in a way that I never thought possible. Mm -hmm. And I think it's from paragraphs like this mm -hmm. that we read over and over mm -hmm. and how you always say, just let it wash over you. You may not understand all the words or all the concepts, but let it wash over you. And by the end of the first year, I was like, I, I am, I am pretty good. <laughs> and it, this it's, it's um, paragraphs like this that brought me there. Love it. Paragraph seven. All this, the voice for God relates to you. And as he speaks, the image trembles and seeks to attack the threat it does not know, sensing its basis crumble. Let it go. Salvation of the world depends on you and not upon this little pile of dust. What can you tell the Holy Son of God? Why need he be concerned with it at all? Good question. Anything come up for that one? Um, well, I think it's there that, it, like what I was saying before, I kind of saw myself as a useless pile of dust. But the Course reminds me who I really am, <laughs> what I really am. <laughs> and uh, I start to believe it after hearing it over and over. I'm kind of getting brainwashed. You know what I mean? Yes, we are purposeful piles of dust. <laughs> <laughs> so let eight, it go. right. And so eight, let us find our peace. We will accept the function God has given us for all illusions rest upon the weird belief that we can make another for ourselves. Our self-made roles are shifting and they seem to change from mourner to ecstatic bliss of love and loving. We laugh or weep and greet the day with welcome or with tears. Our very being seems to change as we experience a thousand shifts in moods and our emotions raise us high indeed or dash us to the ground in hopelessness. That sounds terrible. So glad I'm not there anymore. Right. Paragraph nine, is this the son of God? Could he create such instability and call it son? He who is changeless shares his attributes with his creation. All the images his son appears to make 
have no effect on what he is. They blow across his mind like windswept leaves that form a patterning an instant, that form a patterning an instant, break apart to group again and scamper off. Or like mirages seen above a desert rising from the dust. These unsubstantial images will go and leave your mind unclouded and serene when you accept the function given you, the image you make give rise to but conflicting goals, impermanence and vague uncertainty and amb ambiguous. Who could be consistent in his efforts or direct his energies and concentrated drive towards goals like these? The function which the world esteems are so uncertain that they change 10 times an hour at their most secure. What hope of gain can rest on goals like these? In lovely contrast, certain as the sun's return each morning to dispel the night, your truly given function stands out clear and wholly unambiguous. There is no doubt of its validity. It comes from one who knows no error and his voice is certain of its messages. They will not change nor be in conflict. All of them point to one goal and one you can attain. Your plan may be impossible, but God's can never fail because he is its source. Come on, this is a good lesson. Aren't you glad we read this lesson? <laughs> this is a really good lesson. Long, but good, yes. Do as God's voice directs, and if it asks the thing of you which seems impossible, remember who it is that asks and who would make denial. Then consider this, which is more likely to be right, the voice that speaks for the creator of all things, who knows all things exactly as they are, or a distorted image of yourself, confused, bewildered, and inconsistent, and unsure of everything. Let not this voice direct you. Hear instead a certain voice which tells you of a function given you by your creator who remembers you and urges that you now remember him. Yeah. His gentle voice is calling from the known to the unknowing. He will comfort you, although he knows no sorrow. He would make a restitution, though he is complete. A gift to you although he knows that you have everything already. He has thoughts, capital T, which answer every need his son perceives, although he seeks them not. For love must give, and what is given in his name takes on the form most useful in a world of form. I like them apples. Oh. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's a great clause right in there that says like, you know, just speak his name, take his direction, you will be given everything that you need. And um, that's a beautiful assurance. These are the forms which never can deceive because they come from formlessness itself. Forgiveness is an earthly form of love, which as it is in heaven has no form. Yet what is needed here is given here as it is needed. In this form, you can fulfill your function even here. Although what love would mean to you when formlessness has been restored to you is greater still. Salvation of the world depends on you who can forgive. Such is your function here. So, so forgive, salvation of the world depends on me and you who can forgive. And... I think that what we want to be aware of too in this lesson is sort of self-directed plans. You know, like it's saying like, this is the plan of God. All you got to do is show up and do the plan and, um, and don't fight the plan and don't wrestle with God. It's really dumb to wrestle with God. And don't think that God is going to ask you for sacrifice because when you do the plan of God, not only are you given everything to fulfill the plan of God, but it already knows your strengths, your joys, your pleasures. And it's like, oh, okay. So we need this chick for this role because it's going to light her up and we need well-lit calling cards. And also it's also going to use everything that she has strong cards in. So she's going to like doing it and she's going to be happy doing it. And um, that doesn't mean to say that sometimes we're not going to be in situations where it's like, God, you got the wrong person. 
and this uh, and I should be doing something better. This is not of me, or I'm not ready. I'm not good enough for this. It's not to say the ego is not going to get in there and try and like reinterpret the the, the script, which is that's its whole job. But we just got to stay steady with the interpretation of God, which is this is for me. This is perfect. I'll be damned if I'm not blessed by this, and this will serve everyone. Right. Did you want to share anything? Well, amen, sister, to that. Um, I just know that um, that uh, when before I had this course, I was trying to do as much as I could on my own with every plan that was out there, mm. and uh, or listening from within. But I would get, I would get, um, I would get misguided. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I was misguided because I was in pain mm -hmm. or I was um, in, in depression. Mm -hmm. And um, since I've been doing the course, that just hasn't been part of my life. I got closer to God. I, I, these words helped me believe, get, get a stronghold that God really is there for me mm -hmm. and really knows me. I was taught that by my, in my Catholic upbringing, mm -hmm. but that um, uh, uh, also along with that, that I am perfectly cared for mm -hmm. and that God is always there for me to call on, for him to comfort me mm -hmm. and to reassure me that whatever is in front of me is what he would have me do and that I am able to do it. I just have so much more confidence and that that whole forgiveness piece, the course lays out how to forgive. And as I whittled away at all my unforgivenesses from the past, mm -hmm. I was free. I was free in this moment to listen for the voice for God mm -hmm. and then follow it and practice following it. And as I did that, man, mm -hmm. miracles happened. Yeah. Happened. And salvation of the world, that whole world salvation, mm -hmm. some people use, substitute the word peace. I know you have over the years, mm -hmm. this, the peace of the world depends on me. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to that whole, that, that, that peace that you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. So as I, as I studied the course with you and the others, I found peace within myself. It wasn't something I plastered on like make up. It was real. It was true from within. And as I had that peace within myself, I had it to give to others, not giving, but just simply by being peaceful, I could then extend it to others. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you love Mary? Because Mary, she's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. When we were doing this, Thanks, line, I looked up and there's like not many things in my room, but there's a cork board. And I looked up and guess who was like sitting right there? Hello, Mary. Good job. We love you doing the lesson. <laughs> it's like, he's my ventriloquist. <laughs> so wrong. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Mary. Jesus. Mm-hmm. And yeah. thank you, Maureen, for, for, for saying yes to this course, mm -hmm. saying yes to the people who wanted you to continue it after that first 21 days. Mm -hmm. And um, you've just been a really beautiful teacher because God, this book can be taught in a lot of different ways, but nowhere else have I heard it, um, it, it taught in such a loving way that it doesn't have to be hard and, and, and hurtful and whack you over the head with a, with a rubber mallet. It, mm -hmm. can, it, can, it can come gently. The words can come gently. And then you remind us, um, um, what would love have me do? Mm -hmm. And even in regard to my own self, mm -hmm. what would love have me do right now for myself? Well, it's been beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, because when you say that, I think like gentle teacher, that's not me, that's Mary. <laughs> like, you know, but but I do, um, but what I do know is that I have had some, I have had some really harsh teachers. I have had teachers that have taught me through hot oil. And um, and that's probably what I what I needed to go through so that I could decide I wanted to have the world be differently, that I wanted people to um 
to be taught through gentleness and prayer and kindness and compassion and humor, you know? So I think sometimes when people teach like that, it's because they still are very scared. You know, mean teachers are just scared kids. And, um, you know, I will also say sometimes people get on the phone calls and some people have accused me of more reaming them. (laughs) (laughs) just laying down the truth you know what I mean but I do know that none of that comes from like I hate you it always comes from I I love you I see a potential in you and I really want you to get this do not allow these small potatoes to get in your way of being Mm -hmm. on Mm this so you know it's not like we molly collie people but we um you know we 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 I think we do it really well I mean I really do and I you know it's funny because we have this lesson that's about humility and false humility. And it's like, it's okay to say where you, where you shine. And I think that Miracles Live 365 is a shining gem on the crown of A Course in Miracles community. And, uh, and I, I truly believe that with or without me, you know, it has amazing teachers, de- dedicated and devoted people, students and teachers and members who get up every single day to say, let's let's get to the deep well let's drink up so that we can bring it to the world in the way that we're called to bring it to the world so um i'm i am i'm just a part of that and i'm grateful for it (laughs) well that that really shows a lot of humility maureen because really you really have brought so many people to a place of peace and you know the other thing is um I, I just didn't live with a lot of joy and happiness. And I was, I was skeptical about happiness and laughter and joy in my life before course. Um, but you brought it so that it, um, it, it's, not, um, it's not so scary. I used to think of like, oh, you just laugh and there'd be joy, but then there'd be the, 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 the gauntlet would come down later and really get you. The, the shoe would drop in other words, but um, it, it's genuine with you. You 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 really do make it fun. You make it enjoyable. Um, you make it easy to listen to. And this is not easy if you were to do it by yourself. Mm-hmm. So, thank you so much for these years of of uh, of, of learning and teaching along with us. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. God bless. God bless you. See you on the calls. Namaste. Namaste. See you later. Bye.